Independence Heights was established in the early 1900s, northeast of Houston. Freed slaves had finally found a place where they could call home. Independence Heights was run and owned by African Americans who had homes, businesses, and schools. Independence Heights has nurtured some of Houston's most successful professionals, world-renowned musicians, and other great citizens. So sit, relax, look, and listen to the Independence Heights Oral Histories Part 1. My name is Reverend Alfred R. McCullough Sr. Uh, I'm from the Independence Heights. Uh, my great-grandfather began selling properties for the Wright Land Company back in the 1905-1908. For payment, he would take corner lots. Uh, his son, uh, Reverend Arthur McCullough Sr., moved out here in 1910 and began his family. In 1940, my father organized it. He was the first president of the Independence Heights Civic Club. And it was quite a, uh, a rumor. There were many that didn't want him to have that. And Morris was a baby in this big ditch down 33rd. One morning, my daddy was a letter carrier and he'd get up at three o'clock in the morning going to work. My mother was up fixing his breakfast and she had laid Morris uh, in the bed and something told her to move him and she moved him and the next five minutes a big brick came through the window and landed right where Morris was laying, lying and that saved his life. Hi, I am Mary Ruth Phoenix. Uh, growed up in Northmore Edition. My parents moved from Fourth Ward uh, 1935. They built their house here and they united with Calvary Baptist Church right here on Yale, right at Booker T. Washington School. And they stayed at Calvary Baptist Church till they death. I remember when we, I was a little girl going to borough school, the street was really muddy and most of the time we'd had to come down Yale and hit the railroad track and walk down the railroad track till we get to North Main in order to get to borough school. It's funny to the grandchildren and the great grand when I tell them how we walked in mud and all of that because they don't have to do that. They have nice paved street now. But I remember when we had streetcar coming down North Main and we rode the streetcar. It was fun to us because it was a, a streetcar and streetcar stayed on North Main. And I, I done forgot because like I said, I was real young, but I think it turned, the streetcar turned on 34th or 35th going back to town. We just had a good time when we was coming up and Sometimes I tell my children we had a show on North Main and they ask me, show them, and I show them now. The building ain't the same, but everything goes down when there's nobody to keep it up. I really love Carrie because that's the only church I have belongs to. And I've stayed to Carrie till the storm tore it. I never would have left Carrie. Imagine, they must didn't want to fix it because it's still sitting there. And it's a hurting thing when you raise up in the church I love Calvary and uh, always will. It may be sitting there rotting and out, but I can say we have had a really good time in Calvary Church, raised plenty of money for it. Alina Allen, mm -hmm. was born September the 17th, 1925. Mm -hmm. And I uh, stayed in the home with my mother and grandmother and grandfather. And I went to uh, Borough School, then to Washington. Mm -hmm. I came up in Concord Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Reverend L. G. Alexander was the pastor at that time. He also baptized me. During that time, none of the churches had pools in the church like they have now, so we had to walk across our line to the bayou. 
But it would always uh, surprise me since I've been grown. Nobody never mentioned anything about seeing a snake or anything in the water. The streets were pitiful. <laughs> It, the only street that was, well, even North Main was, didn't, wasn't paved. And uh, when it would rain, people would have to leave their car down on North Main and walk down, uh, walk home because the, the, uh, it was so muddy and they'd get stuck. I'm a member of Bella Vista Baptist Church now. Mm -hmm. Reverend uh, Calvin J. Abraham is my pastor. I've been at Bella Vista around 51 years. My name is Loda McCullough Charles. I'm the daughter of Reverend Arthur McCullough. And Reverend McCullough was the founder of this church, Salem Baptist Church. And uh, this church was started in the Cummins Hall located on Columbia Street between 33rd and 34th. He had been a member of the Concord Church in which he organized in his home. And when he became a minister, uh, well, he wanted to have his own church. My full name is Wayne Maurice Henderson, Miss Henderson's little boy. Uh, Wayne Henderson and uh, born here in Houston, Texas, grew up in uh, the Independent Heights, Studiwood. We would call it Studiwood Heights. Mm -hmm. My first residence in, in the Heights was on East 31st Street. I remember the address, 1511 East 31st Street. As I grew a little older, we moved over on a street named Bacchus. And from there, we moved to Cornell, and from Cornell Street, we moved to Nayland. It was actually uh, the, it was a street east of 43rd Street between North Main and Alline Drive. Went to James Dallas Burroughs Elementary School. The love of music started in Independence Heights. And what, what's interesting is my uh, mother was a, a pianist and she played for many of the Baptist churches in the area. And being the youngest boy, she would take me with her every Sunday, all day on Sundays. Every church known to mankind in Houston, <laughs> my mom took me every every week. But the fact is, I did. I, I, I love the piano. I love music. See, we belonged. It was a church called True Light Baptist Church. Okay, Mr. Laws. Yeah, same thing. Oh man. Oh, don't mention wow. Mr. Law. Yeah, we were like little puppies running around there. That was true. It was True Light Baptist Church. Then there was another church called Bella Vista. Yeah, Bella Vista. Bella Vista. And uh, after that, it was just. Every church known to man, because I was just going home. <laughs> uh, Hinton Street, uh, my uh, grandfather, his name was uh, uh, Doc Hinton, and uh, he had uh, come into a lot of money over the years, and he had the very first baseball team, uh, black baseball team, in, in the Heights. He uh, owned the Lincoln Theater downtown. I'm Joyce Glenn Eugene. I'm the oldest of the Glenn daughters. And in my school years, I was attending the original Booker T. Washington in the Fourth Ward. And they relocated here in the Heights on 39th Street. And I graduated high school from Booker T. Washington in 1960. As a matter of fact, we just celebrated our 50th year last August. Mm -hmm. And as a student at Booker T. Washington, I was kind of shy and not in a lot of things, but I loved homemaking. Mm -hmm. So I was in the homemaking class, and Miss Hayes was our teacher. Haynes was our teacher, and I enjoyed sewing, sewing and cooking. My name is Faye 
Glenn Johnson Sanders. I'm the second daughter of Reverend and, Mar Reverend and Mrs. Marcel Glenn. I attended Booker T. Washington High School from 1959 up until 1962 in the year which I graduated. I was the youngest of the children in the class of 1962 to graduate from Booker T. Washington. At that time, Mrs. White was our uh, Dean of Girls. When we were practicing for graduation, lined up in the hallway, she came down to see who was in the line and who was going to graduate. She pulled me out of that line and told me, young girl, if you don't get back to your class and get in there and stop out here fooling around with the rest of these students who are going to graduate, I'm going to take you to the office. I began to cry. And she took me to the office. I said, I'm in the class to graduate in 1962. She did not believe me. So she took me to the office. She looked at my transcript and found out I was in the class of 1962 to graduate. And at that time when we graduated, we were the highest number of graduates at that school. It was 400 of us mm. in that class. Mm -hmm. And we will celebrate our 50th year anniversary in 2012, August of 2012. My name is Terry Glenn Eagleton. I graduated from Booker T. Washington High School in 1963. Her class was the biggest. My class was the next biggest. We had 400 and some odd. She was 62 and I was 63. Mm -hmm. We are a year and a day apart. In age. In age <laughs> and our birthdays and all. And uh, we will have our 50th year coming up in the year 2013. While at Booker T, I was in the Booster Club and we went to a lot of the games and all and participated. Were you in the band? I was in the band at one time and the choir and some other organizations that I've gotten too old to remember now. I am Shirley Mitchell. I grew up in Independence Heights, better known as Studewood. Uh, I was raised uh, on Omega and 35th Street, close to the airline and very close to the tracks. My parents are Leola and Jake Mitchell. My father died uh, when I was a young child. And uh, I guess uh, that was one of the things that I really remembered as a child, about four years old, was at that time they had the wait at our house and I remember all the people coming in and I was wondering what was going on. And uh, it was his way. I attended Burroughs Elementary School. While we were in school, we really loved the way the teachers dressed. They were very instrumental in teaching us how to dress and how to carry ourselves as lady and gentlemen. We were idle. We had a lot of idleness in our families because we didn't have a lot of books. We didn't have a lot of coloring books. We didn't have a lot of things, arts and crafts and things to do. We didn't have that. So we were kind of idle children. So we would come to church to learn to do these things. We were poor. We were poor. And the Lord, uh, you know, he saw us through it, but it could have been easier if yeah. we had work. I know my brother, when he uh, reached 18, 18, he would work. But then he would work, too, during the summer at the farmer's market. He would go down and work. Hi, I'm Hubert Laws, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background in what's called Independent Heights now. Uh, I knew it as Studi Wood, so many things I can remember. But now, start out by remembering that we never locked our doors because uh, there was such a freedom and such an, uh, I guess, honesty around the neighborhood. We feel there was, there was the crime was not, I guess, as, as rampant as it is today. Many times um, I found myself staying home while most of my siblings were out playing or whatever. I would be there under the radio or going to the piano. We had a piano in our home because my mother 
was the local uh, Baptist church pianist for the choir. Uh, True Light, True Light Baptist Church, yeah. Yeah, well, at that time, let's see, was it, uh, yeah, that's right, they rebuilt it since, since we were there. Um, and she was a pianist, and that's why we had a, uh, a piano in the home. And my mother tells me when I was about that age, I got up to the piano and began making out my own melodies. I heard on the radio just about that, that time a big hit, in the local area anyway, by Tab Smith. It was called Because of You. Beautiful saxophone sound. I was a paper boy for the, New, the, the Houston Chronicle. Uh, I began saving my little pennies so I could buy an alto saxophone to replicate that sound that I heard from Tab, Tab Smith. So um, uh, I saved up. I remember exactly how much I paid for the saxophone, <laughs> saxophone back then. That was in the 50s, okay? I saved $242 to pay for that alto saxophone. I learned to play because of you. And somehow or another, I entered a, a, a talent show, mm -hmm. a Tommy, a Tommy Kane trout talent show, and I ended up winning that talent show a couple of times. And that took me to playing uh, clubs. And I heard that mentioned in an interview earlier about uh, the Whispering Pines. That was a place, in fact, that's the name of one of the tunes the Crusaders recorded, <laughs> Whispering Pines and Club De Lisa, then we, and, and the Club Ebony, and um, the El Dorado. Yeah, I played the church sacred. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I did a lot of, you know, I did a lot of my practicing with Wayne Henderson. Now, you know, Wayne Henderson was, uh, lived right across the street from me because there was a honky-tonk right across the street called Miss Mary's Place. A matter of fact, my brother Ronnie recorded a, a tune and he called it Miss Mary's Place. And I think Wayne did something with the Crusaders and he, that's uh, reminiscent of that place because it was like we hear music blasting out of that, that, that place every night. Our address was 3317 Cornell and that's the same street where, you know, of course, that's where the, uh, the honky tonk was. I always drive through there. I always drive through. In fact, one of my best friends who lives here, Jim Bowie, lives in, in the Heights. Oh, really? His, his son. His son? He had twins, yeah. James and John. And James, I always visit. And during that time, it was a, a term up here that was the, during the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the Freedom Riders. And, the, and they would come to different black colleges and meet with us and, and those who wanted to join the protests, protests at the lunch counters. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Wild Green were they sit-ins, that's what sit -ins. they sit-ins. Uh -huh. Yeah, Woolsworth, that's mm -hmm. what it was. Woolsworth, they did the sit-ins, but I didn't participate in the sit-ins mm -hmm. because I didn't meet the criteria. You had to be able to hold your temper, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they told us, you know, they don't let them, if you can sit there and not be provoked, that's what you had to do. Um, but I didn't fit that, I could not, I would not be able to hold my temper. So I, and then my, my grandfather was real strict and he would have killed me if I had gotten in trouble. I figured he would have left me in jail. <laughs> and I, and I, so I didn't participate, but a lot of my classmates did. We did the, uh, the sit-ins. Uh, weekends for me a lot involved going downtown Houston to Woolworth. They didn't want blacks in Woolworth at the counters, mm -hmm. but they had sort of lessened that whole um, concept of not allowing us to sit at the counter and order food. So a group of me and my friends would go down, down purposefully to rattle their cages and sit at the uh, counter and order us some, a slice of pizza. That's about all we could afford because <laughs> nobody was really doing much of any work or whatever at that time. So we would go down there and get us a slice of pizza and maybe a, a cup of soda or whatever and sit there and eat like the whites. And then we would get up and we would leave. Orion Pruitt and I am uh, a native Houstonian and a native independent Heights person. I've been out here, I was raised out here. And when I was three years old, I started to Kennedy, I mean to Burroughs Elementary School. We had a kindergarten and I went to the kindergarten at Burroughs. I graduated from Burroughs, I went to Booker Washington and I went there until uh, I was in the 11th grade, going into the 11th grade and all of a sudden, you know, I met my husband. We decided to get married. That was, I was 16 years old and 
You know, at, this, at that time, that was unheard of. We moved Fifth Ward, stayed out there for a little while, and moved back out to Studewood, Independent Heights. They called it Studewood after the bus started coming out here because it was Independent Heights is all I ever knew until they changed and started bus service up and down North Main. I was raised on 32nd Street, and I was about like two and a half blocks from the school. So all we had to do was get up and come around the corner and run over to Burroughs. This house became the nursery. It became a vacant house. I said, well, I'm going to get that house because I don't know who's going to be in it. We'll just rent it out and have it because I don't know who's going to move in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was all of a different persuasion, but they were gradually moving out. I had two neighbors that were of color, and that was next door to me and the one down the street. I retired from Kennedy. I worked at Kennedy as cashier, and I was PTA president. And when Miss Gunnells, Bestofia Gunnells, was principal at Bur at Kennedy, mm -hmm. she said, "I'm not going to leave until you retire. If you retire, I'll retire." So we retired together. It was a wonderful affair. Okay, my name is Barbara Wilson Hightower. Um, I've been here uh, since I was like three or four years old. Uh, my mother was a member here at True Light uh, when I was born, so I've been here all of my life. Growing up, uh, it was a lot different than now uh, because at that time it was like it takes a whole village to raise a child. And at that time, not only did we have our parents uh, raising us, we also had the neighbors raising us. Here at True Light, uh, all the elderly people that in the age group of my mother and dad were also our parents. I got married out here uh, in this area. W.M. Bowie married me. Uh, I had three kids and they were also raised here at True Light Baptist Church. Our social life was here at True Light Baptist Church. We started out Sunday school. Um, we would come back for three o'clock service most of the time, then uh, back for six o'clock service and then back again for eight o'clock service. We don't have that anymore. <laughs> when Pastor Bowie came back, his thing was to, we're here to serve the neighborhood. And his thing was to revamp the neighborhood, make it a place where people would want to live. People that left the neighborhood would want to come back to the neighborhood. We did have a lot of businesses that we don't see now, black owned businesses uh, that we don't see now uh, They just, like I said, the older people had a lot of pride in that. They wanted to keep the business in the neighborhood and uh, politics took the businesses out. Uh, everybody all over the city of Houston knew about Bernice Barbecue, which was across the street. Yes. Motorcycle Place has it now. That was a place that everybody gathered there. They had the best barbecue in the city of Houston. They really did. <laughs> we had a hamburger stand uh, down the street. Uh, barbershops, beauty shops, uh, thriving businesses. And they kept the business uh, here in the neighborhood and everybody uh, used the businesses which kept the money here. Mm -hmm. But now uh, all of that's gone. Independence Heights is a fascinating neighborhood filled with so much history, pride and promise. As we continue to grow and develop we invite you to take a look at the new things in Independence Heights. But don't blink, because you'll miss it. <laughs>